be at my yes hi guys welcome back to my channel happy new year to you all um i know it's been a while since i actually did a sit down recorded video um it's well overdue but 2019 one of my to do's this year is to be more consistent with uploading video and actually responding to the requests that i get from my subscribers so if you haven't already done so please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and like this video at the end of it also i want to thank all my subscribers um i want to thank all of you guys basically it's all new subscribers um i'm just a little bit over a hundred subbies hey i know it's not much but i am super grateful for each and every one of you that has subscribed to my channel because i'm not yet in law school and to know that you guys are actually you know asking for advice or you guys are just watching my videos um i'm really appreciative of it so shout out to you guys. So today, this video, and I'm going to have a lot more videos um, coming up because I am on the roll right now getting stuff recorded for you all and being a new me, being productive, you know what I mean? Like, well, productive on my YouTube channel. Well, so um, speaking fast, so let's slow it down. This video is going to be about um, basically how to study while working for the LSAT. Um, I got this request. Let me see. Um, I'm going to shout her out. Yes, that's her. Cheyenne Benjamin. Um, she asked, you know, how I track my progress and basically to ask me to do a video on how to basically balance um, studying for the LSAT while working. And also, I think similar question to that was um, Shamaya, I want to say, Harris. Shout out to you guys for um, asking those questions. So that's basically what this video is going to be about. So I took a little bit of notes so that I could kind of like um, keep it in track a little bit and give you guys advice based on what I have been doing. So I've been tracking a little bit of my routines because I haven't really like sat down and thought about exactly what I do but um I wrote everything down and hopefully it makes sense all right so for me what I would do on a typical week I study from Monday to Thursday I have Fridays off for myself and Sundays off for myself so during the week Monday to Thursday and then on the weekend Saturday are my L Saturdays where I take a full practice test whether it be untimed or timed that's when I would sit down and take a full practice test this is the earlier beginning staging this earlier stages of studying so throughout the week what would I do on Monday so because you have to work what I specifically do is I would if you have like breaks or on your lunch um I would just answer LSAT questions. I won't time myself. I'll just answer questions to the best of my ability with the understanding that I have. So I would go through my logical reasoning section and I would read as carefully as possible and I would, you know, answer the questions. Now, a tactic that I use to try to own in on what's going on with logical reasoning is that I would cross out all the answers that I am sure are incorrect. And then I try to like highlight little words that signals off, okay, this can't, this answer can't be correct as I'm going through the problems. And then I would circle the right answer. Sometimes I'll find the right answer and then I'll circle it, but then I'll still go through and I'll cross out the wrong answers and I'll see the reasoning as to why those answers were wrong. So that's kind of a method that's called blind review. Um, it's a mini blind review method, basically. Um, if you don't know what that is, I would suggest you check out Seven Sage. They're amazing with that method, and it truly does help you to understand more of the questions and how they are structured and things like that. You'll start to see little patterns that'll be helpful. So I'll answer, if I can only answer on Monday 20 questions, I will just answer 20 questions in um, the practice test. And this would be like on break or on lunch. Then I'll go to the library. So depending on how much time you have in your commitment, you can decide how many hours you'll be able to spend in the library and be productive. Don't go and say, okay, I'm going to do four hours today, you know, at the library. And you know that you're not going to be productive for those hours because I mean, you're just wasting time and you're not going to really 
be benefiting yourself while you're studying. So um, I would go after to the library and that's where I was, again, accomplish as much as I possibly can. I do this Monday through Thursday. And then at the end of the week on Thursday, I'll just go and input my scores into Power Scores. Um, you can go on powerscore.com and their LSAT self study area. You don't have to pay for this. You can just use your email, sign up, and you can input the answers. The reason why I do this instead of going in the back of the book and checking the answers and then like, you know, being aware is because I don't want to own in onto, okay, this is the right answer for this or that. I take it at the end of um, the week, I put my scores in and then I get a generated score as to what I got right. You are able to see um, what questions specifically you got right, your raw score, how many questions you got right. Um, and then it just breaks it down for you from power score. It's super helpful. So this helps me to not like memorize right answers so I can go back and use that test again for practice. Because I find that when you practice from those tests and you circle it and you check from the back and you go back, you remember reading, okay, I got this one right. I got this one wrong. Now inputting into power score, I don't know which ones I got right and I don't know which ones I got wrong. I just know generally when I did this without timed constraints. This is the score that I got, right? So this is my understanding. Then after, you know, when I've taken a few tests, I can go back, take that test again, and then go from there and see, okay, these are the ones that I got wrong and try to see why I got them wrong. That's just something that I do just to work out my situation. You can choose to do it differently if you so choose. Okay. So my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays aren't full practice tests. Um, they are just how many questions I can get right. And then I try to complete at least that one practice test by the end of the week. It's not all in one sitting. And that's how I study. On Saturdays, I would have a, a practice test and I would take that in one sitting. Whether you do it proctored or you do it non-proctored. Proctored videos you can get from PowerScore. Again, you can find them on YouTube um, and stuff like that. But if I do it non-timed, I try to do it all while sitting down. Um, on Saturdays. Saturdays are also my days if you're just beginning your study where you learn from your supplemental um, study guide. So for example, I use um, Power Score for, I'm probably talking super fast, sorry guys. I'm just, ugh. but yeah. So um, for logical reasoning, this is the book that I use, Power Score's LSAT Logical Games Bible, excuse me, Logical Games, not Logical Reasoning. And then for logical reasoning, I love, 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 love the LSAT trainer. The LSAT trainer has made a world of difference for me when it comes to studying and understanding like logical reasoning, like super amazing. Um, yeah, so that's what I do generally. Um, on the weekends, Saturdays, I sit down and I take, you know, one sitting practice test throughout the week. I would answer as many questions as I possibly can within a test and then score it at the end of the week. Um, and then I study for um, like from the books on Saturdays and I don't study on Fridays and I don't study on Sundays. Those are my downtime, my rest time. Now, if you're a little bit closer to your test date, I would adjust this a little bit and try to you know, do sections. So when you go to the library and I also do this, instead of taking as many questions as I can handle for that day, I would say, okay, I'm going to be sitting down today after I get from work on Monday and I'm going to be taking section one and section two. And then I'm Tuesday, I'm going to take section three and section four, you know, or if you're doing a full length, you know, five section, you break it up accordingly. Um, a tip that I would give for um, studying is to make sure that you, you do blind review. I really, 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 really suggest you guys check out Seven Sage and um, look at their blind review method. You can now get free courses from a lot of companies, Kaplan, Blueprint, Seven Sage, that they're charging for. You can get it free if you qualify for the LSAC fee waiver. I'm going to do another video, updated video, on all the perks of the LSAC fee waiver. Make sure that you guys are applying for this because... Like bar none, it's like one of the best decisions you can ever do for yourself without any constraints. You're not losing anything at all. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I do. I hope that that wasn't like all over the place and you can understand. Let me know down below if I was clear as to um, how to balance it. Um, 
I'm gonna just recap again, just in case I wasn't clear. On work days, Monday through Thursday, I would take as many um, questions, I would answer as many questions as I possibly can. And then Fridays, I am off. Saturdays, I take a, either a timed or an untimed practice test. Um, and then from Monday to Thursdays, the questions that I have score, um, answered, I would score them at the ending of that week. Um, well, a big thing that has made a difference within my score, I believe, and I'm getting closer to my goal score, is, you know, blind reviewing. And that is basically after I answer my questions, I ensure that I go back to try to see why I answered that question that way, why I thought it was right, why I thought it was wrong. Um, and then that has helped me a lot to see different patterns and stuff like that that's been happening in the LSAT, as well as just taking more practice tests as a whole. My preparation before was just using my logic game book and, um, you know, I just thought that was enough. It was not in order to get me into the range that I want to score in. So I just decided to scratch everything that I have done before and try a completely new method, which this has been helping me. I've been scoring a lot better and I'm a lot closer to my goal score. So... If you are someone that's working full time, don't feel like you can't do it. You can study in the morning if you can get up early. Study in your productive studying in the morning. Study a little bit in the morning before you go and start your day. Um, and then study a little bit after if you can as well. I know this might be hard and tougher on you, but you have to do what you have to do to get the scores that you want. Um, you might not need to do this to get the score that you want to go to the school that you want to go to. But if you're, you know, aiming for a higher score, then a lot of sacrifice is going to come to get that. So throughout the week, answer as many questions as you possibly can and score yourself at the end of the week. And then on your weekend day, find that one day that you sit down, you take a proctored test or you take just an on time test and then review the answers as to why you did this right, why you did that wrong. It's gonna take a lot of time to do this, but it is necessary and it'll be more beneficial to you than to just take the test and then check the answers right away and then on to the next test. Try to understand your processes of why am I choosing these answers? Why are these answers wrong? Because when you start to notice those patterns, it'll be so much easier and you'll be a lot more confident as to okay this is a this is c when you see these different question types going along in the test um i've been a, all over the place so i also wanted to mention some of the um resources that you guys can use to study if i haven't already mentioned it my camera i ran out of um space so i had to delete some stuff and come back and um you know, finish up the video. So I don't remember exactly where I left off. So some of the resources that I use are PowerScore. Um, I think I showed it before, but their LSAT Logic Game Bible. Super amazing. Like, I definitely recommend this book. It's really, 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 really good if you're struggling with logical games. Um, my last two practice tests that I've taken, I, the Logic Games has been my highest score um on it crazy but um it's really good this is amazing the lsat trainer i can't recommend this book enough when it comes to the processes and thinking you're like getting your mindset together for the logical reasoning section amazing amazing strategy that i think just you know brought me a notch up and i'm super grateful that i got um that book to help me prepare this time around um seven sage check out their blind review method like that method you would think it's tedious and it takes a while but it will help you it will help you increase your score if you are willing to do the ground dirty work with blind review your score is going to increase i can tell you that my problem with my test my testing um my practicing habits before was that I didn't want to do the true dirty work I didn't want to I just wanted to take my test 
get my scores and just started to increase. Read, okay, this is how I'm supposed to do it, but I wasn't applying myself properly to understand why I kept getting answers incorrect. I just kind of like, oh, I got it incorrect, dang it. And then I went to the next one and I'm still getting them wrong because I don't understand why I'm getting them wrong, you know what I mean? Or understanding why I'm getting stuff right. So sometimes I got stuff right on look. And I really didn't know that, that I really didn't understand what I was doing. So blind review, that method, amazing. Check it out, um, Seven Sage. And then, yes, I just said the LSAT trainer. If you're looking to get a schedule because you don't know how to make your own schedule, you can go on Power Score. Or even if you get the LSAT trainer, they give you, um, like, planned out schedules, like three months, four months, five, up to a year, um, I think. Yeah, so it depends um, on what your time frame is before you take the exam. Um, ensure that when you're taking the LSAT, you don't pressure yourself to say, you know what, I'm going to start school at this time, so I'm going to have to take this LSAT and whatever I get, I'm just going to throw it up. Well, if you think that's fine for you, do it. But if you want to get the most out of it, really take the time to prep for the LSAT and get the best score that you possibly can. I am not one to settle. I am not one to accept, you know, mediocre. I'm not one to just go on a wimp. If I don't feel like I'm putting in my best effort and I've done the best that I can and I've crossed all my T's and dot all my I's, I can't feel comfortable moving forward. And that has been my journey so far um, with law school. And I'll probably do a different video explaining that to you guys. But yeah, so hopefully this video was helpful to you all that are working and studying for the LSAT like myself. Um... As I get closer to test day, I had some, again, if I didn't have obstacles with my LSAT testing and all that stuff, I wouldn't be me. Um, my test date is pushed back, but um, if you are working, you know, do as much as you can on each day. Just continue to answer questions, more practice, answering questions, figuring out why I got this right, why I got this wrong. Have that as your focus on the days that you only have a limited amount of time to um, to study. Continuously just do it in chunks. Chunk it together. One section today, one section tomorrow. Do that as much as you can to get as much exposure to as many problems as you can. And that would be super helpful for you guys. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And again, I want to thank the over a hundred of you guys that subscribe to my channel thank special thanks to all you guys that comment on my videos please engage and comment on my videos i would love to hear your feedback what you would like to know like i have so many resources now that i am able to um help you guys in a lot of different ways so ask questions um send me messages i am here for it all also follow me on instagram at soon to be underscore esquire no lies it's soon to be underscore esq so s-o-o-n two the number two b underscore esq i post a lot of useful information there updates timelines um for studying deadline registration de registration deadlines and all that good stuff so follow me there for a lot of inspiration for like studying and all that good stuff there i'll also be recording my journey through law school once I get into law school and stuff on my Instagram as well. Thank you all so much for watching this video and I hope you guys come back to my channel, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and see you all later. Thank you all so much.